So the next feature I'd like to tell you about is the toroidal bolt lugs of the mousing field bolt. Now, if you're a gunsmith or a rifle builder, I think you're really going to appreciate this one because it basically, uh, the, 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 the bolt, the, you never have to lap the lugs of this bolt as you do with other rifles. And the, the reason, just to inform the viewers out there, let's just use this Mauser action as an example. When you cock a bolt action, there's an interaction between the sear and the striker that lifts the back end of the bolt, right? And, and as it lifts, because there's clearance between the receiver and the bolt, right? If you lift the back end of the bolt even ever so slightly, you essentially disengage the lug that happens to be at 12 o'clock, usually the top lug, if we're talking about a bolt action with, uh, you know, two diametrically opposed lugs. Usually one ends up, when it's locked up, one will end up at six at 12 o'clock, the other one at 6 o'clock. Uh, a cycle will be a little different with the three lugs, uh, but nevertheless, uh, if you lift the back of any bolt apart, you know, except for a mousing field, and I'll, I'll show you why in a second, uh, you're going to basically compromise the engagement between the uh, lugs and the receiver, which is why gunsmiths typically uh, lap lugs on, uh, you know, to get proper contact or at least improved contact between the, the locking lugs and the receiver when the rifle is locked up and ready to fire. So the reason you don't have to do it with a mousing field is that the bearing surface of these of the bolt lugs, uh, it's toroid. The, the shape of the bearing surface is essentially toroidal, and with some the help of some some visual aid here, courtesy of Fisher Price, uh, this is a torus, which is essentially a donut or an O-ring, and I just took a, a sharpie to illustrate the portion of the torus that represents the bearing surface of the lugs. So when the bolt is inserted into the receiver, the toroidal lugs engage a corresponding surface with it, within the receiver, right, that is spherical. That's way down in there. There's a spherical surface like right there, and then there's another one there for the for the 12 o'clock lug. So basically proper engagement between the locking lugs of a mousing field and the receiver is insensitive to the alignment between the bolt and the receiver. It doesn't matter if the, you know, if the bolt's down like this or up like this or over like this or, well, you know, whatever. They, the two can only properly contact one another and that's where the visual aid comes in. Here's a tor torus, here's a bowl that could represent the spherical bearing surface within the receiver. If you put the torus in the bowl, no matter how it's oriented, it always contacts the bowl the same way. And basically, in the action, or in, in, on the bolt, the contact will be along an arc that bisects the bearing surface of each lug. And under load, these, the lugs will be elastically flattened against the receiver and, the, and vice versa as well. The receiver, will, you know, the bearing surface of the receiver will flatten against the lugs. And that area of contact increases and transmits load. Now, the nice thing about th this is we can, if we can control contact, we can understand uh, the force that, that interact, the interaction, the forces of the interaction between the uh, bolt and the receiver. And with that, if we can understand forces and, uh, and the nature of the contact, we can optimize the lugs, uh, making them small and thereby enabling us to fit a fully functioning Mauser type extractor within a, a diameter within a receiver having an outside diameter equal to that of the Remington. Uh, 
that this is a uh, patent pending feature of American Rifle Company. It's completely unique to American Rifle. Uh, and I think it is, I think it is a legitimate advancement to the state of the bolt action art.